Hi and welcome. I think I'm live on both so I'm just going to ramble for a few minutes before I probably need to turn the comments off for, on Instagram because they might obstruct the view on my screen but welcome everybody and thank you for joining me. Great to see some names popping up there so I'm going to just give it a few minutes to give people a chance to join. Um, so far for our 24 hour fundraising event of classes my last check before I logged on, there was over £15,000 raised, which is really incredible. So thank you all very much for your support. And if you haven't donated, please do so. You can find the details on Instagram if you check the link, link on the bio or on the Pilates Workshop website. There's a page which has got all the details that you need there. So thank you very much for your support. Um, obviously, I don't necessarily know all of you, some of you I do, and it's really lovely to see some familiar names pop up, so thank you for that. So please work at your level. If you need to modify anything, please do. If you need to have a breather, please do. So don't push it, just enjoy it and just work within your capabilities and hopefully we can just have a really lovely time moving together and I will be glad to catch my breath after. So apologies if I'm gabbling or rambling on, I'm a little bit nervous, so thank you for bearing with me. I'm just checking everything here. So hi, I think Aga, Shelley, thank you. Thank you for joining me. Sit. So attempting the simultaneous live stream. I'll just give it a couple more minutes before we actually get officially started. Um, if you haven't already, grab your mat, grab some cushions, some water, um, stretch band if you can um, and maybe some light weights and overball if you have it possibly and we'll see how we go from there. Great, so thank you everyone. Nice to see you all. I will turn the comments off on Instagram because I think with my map position it might obscure things a little bit there. Thank you, thank you for the good luck wishes. And hi Sabine, thank you. Kiss back to you as well. Hi Liz, thank you. Thanks Lisa. It's been an amazing lineup of classes so far. I've been too nervous to join in, um, but I hope we can catch up with them over the next few days. Hi Florence, thank you. Great, thanks Shelley. I'll just check the time, I'll give it a couple more minutes then we'll get going. Hi Paula, thank you for your support. So if you're having a breather, go and check out how much we raised already, which was over 15,000 when I last checked. And if you haven't donated yet, please do so. And you can find the details on the pilatesworkshop.co.uk website or on them, um, if you're on, watching on Instagram, just check the link in the bio. Okay, so I'm just waiting till it hits seven and then I was gonna pause the comments on Instagram. Hi Amanda, thank you for joining. Hi everyone, thank you. I will try to enjoy once I get going to. Thanks Kate. Thank you Sabine. Right, I've got quite a few clocks I'm checking out just because I want to try and be consistent timing. Brilliant. Oh, thank you Nikki, thank you. Glad you're here too. Right, I'm gonna try and turn off the comments on Instagram just for now because I'm a bit worried they might just block the view. So I'm just pausing comments, but do um, do kind of check in again a bit later for those. So thank you, hopefully that's that bit done. And then we'll get started now. But last, after all the waffling, let's get started. So we're just gonna to come to sit on your mat and you can sit cross-legged, long frog, whatever is comfortable for you. If it's uncomfortable in your hips, just prop yourself up on a block or a few cushions. And to begin with, we're going to just focus on our breath. And selfishly, that's just for me to calm down a little bit and get into the swing of things as well. So hopefully that will help all of us. And um, let's just take a wide breath in through the nose. Try and fill up the back and sides of your lungs. And then a long breath out through your mouth. So just that wide breath in. Long breath out. That's it. So just a few calm breaths. And then as you breathe out, you can just begin to make a little bit of a connection to your center. Just a little bit. 
And as you're just getting into your breathing pattern, just make sure you're evenly weighted on both sit bones and you're just lengthening your spine as much as you can. And then carry on with your breath. You can just begin to shrug the shoulders up as you inhale and then exhale, just soften and release. So just a few shoulder rolls. Try and keep that length through your neck. That's it, lovely. And then you can either stay with this or if it's comfortable for you and your shoulders, bring the arms up and bring the hands behind your head. So I've placed the thumbs at the base of my hairline, a bit like a curl up position. Elbows, shoulders soft, and I guess do a few corkscrew shoulders. So it's going to inhale, shrug up the shoulders, and then exhale, releasing them down. Keep that length through the neck. So inhale, shrug, and then exhale, release. Just two or three more. So keeping that length. And then once you've released from this one, we're just going to take the arm back a little bit as you inhale without poking the head or the chest forward and then exhale, return. So we'll just do maybe three or four more of those. Just opening up the shoulders a little, keeping that length through the neck. Just two or three more. Still sitting tall, still with that connection to your centre. And if it's comfortable to keep the hand in this position, we will do. Otherwise, you could just bring the hands across your chest. We're going to just do a little bit of rotation. So elbow, shoulders soft, using the hands to really lengthen the neck. So breath in to lengthen. And then as you breathe out, we're going to just rotate round to one side. And then inhale, come back to the centre. So exhale, round to the other side. And then inhale, come back to the centre. Just check the shoulders haven't begun to creep up. Creep up. So we inhale, length and exhale, rotate. And then inhale, coming back. Just do one more to each side after this. So checking that you've still got the even weight through both sit bones and length through both sides of the spine. Keep the hands here if you can, otherwise you could bring the arms down and do your side reach with the, your side reach with the arms in that position. So we're gonna just breath in and then up and over. And as you exhale, breath in to stay. And then as you breathe out, lengthen and stack back up. So we're going to inhale, lengthen over, take another breath there, and then stacking back up. Just one or two more to each side, or you might prefer to just have the arms extended. So just really easy side reach when you'd inhale up and exhale over. Okay, just even up with those. Lovely. And then if you need to just give the wrists a few circles or just start to mobilize them a little bit we're going to come into some four point kneeling and um, if it's not comfortable to wait there on the wrists i'll give you a little alternative that you could use on the elbows as well so we'll come into four point kneeling so we're just going to set up with arms under shoulders knees under hips pressing the floor away Spread the fingers, so check when it's kind of collapsing into the hands. Maybe think you've got sticky fingertips so they draw up slightly rather than just splat onto the floor. Let's just spiral the arms forward so the elbow crease faces forward and the point faces backwards. So I'm pressing the floor away, keeping my centre engaged, trying to keep the neck and the head in line and we'll just do a tricep press. So as you breathe out and centre, you're going to bow down just a little way, try to keep your bottom still rather than reverse back. And then we'll inhale, lengthen. So you can exhale, bow down, and inhale, lengthen up. And then if this is tricky for wrists, an alternative might be you come onto elbows, forearms, palms in, and as you breathe out, you just hover the elbows a little bit. So you could do a few in that position, and maybe palms up as well, if it's tricky to wait there onto the wrists. Otherwise, let's try and do three or four more of the tricep press for your variation. So as you breath out, just bowing down, it's tempting to begin to reverse back into your rest position. So try to avoid that if you can. Good. Lovely. And then from here, we're going to do a little bit of tabletop and then some threading the needle and begin to pop that all together. So initially the elbow crease was facing forward. I'd like you to try and spiral the arm so the inner elbow crease faces in towards each other a little more now. So still pressing the floor away, keeping your centre engaged. So as you breathe out centre, we're going to just slide one leg away. So keep the pelvis steady. You can raise the leg up if okay, otherwise keep it lengthened. And then if you want to, slide the opposite arm away and lengthen, staying as steady as you can. 
breath to stay. And then as you breathe out, you can lower leg and or arm to glide back in again. So breath and center sliding the leg, maybe it lifts, maybe the opposite arm joins as well. There's breath to stay, like you're floating in the air. And then we'll lower and glide it in. Let's just try two or three more. So staying as steady as you can, so try not to sway over side to side. Well, I'm going to just do one more to each side, keeping that length through your neck and try not to dip into that lumbar spine. And then from here, do a little bit of threading the needle. So I've still got that same setup I had for tabletop, inner elbow crease faces each other. So breath and centre, I'm going to just transfer the weight to one hand, back of the hand will brush past the other wrist as I reach through and bend that elbow for supporting arm. Take a breath there. So as you breathe out, begin to unravel and stack back up. So other side, so breath and centre, you reach through, back of the hand brushes past the other wrist, try to keep neutral rather than round, breath there and then unravel to come back up. But you can stay with that or you can begin to open the arm as you come back, a bit like a sort of bow and arrow movement. Take a breath and then gliding it back. So just reaching through, breath, unraveling, and maybe you want to open out the arm as well. Try not to dip in the hips. Okay, so you could stay with that, or the next option I'm going to add on is an opposite tabletop leg. So if I slide one leg away, I'm going to curl the toes underneath me, but keep the foot like an anchor, and I'm going to try and keep that lower half really steady. Opposite hand, I'm not going to redo the reaching through now, but I'm going to just bring that hand to my chest as I inhale and exhale, start to unravel and open up. Taking a breath there, watching the other hip doesn't drop down. Tabletop that other leg, curl the toes, keep that lower half steady, hand to chest and unravel and open out. Breath there and then gliding up. Let's try and do at least one more of those each way or one of the previous variations. So really just opening up, lovely. And then when you've evened up, we'll just do a little bit of cat before we come off of our hands. So you're still in your four point kneeling position. You could either just do normal cat as you breathe out, center, just rounding up into your cat shape and then unravel to neutral. Or you might want to round up into your cat shape and then possibly reversing back then finding neutral maybe a little bit of upper back extension and possibly letting those sit bones widen and then coming back to where you started so as you breathe out rounding up maybe reversing as well rippling to neutral or a little bit of extension that let those sit bones widen and then rock back to where you began so just whichever works for you to just get things moving. You might already be really warmed up if you've done plenty of the classes already. So just listen to what feels good for you this evening. Let's just do a couple more really comfortable cats. That's it. I'm going to make this the last one. And if you want to sit all the way back into rest on that final one, just take a few breaths there, you can do. Keeping the feet together, the knees apart, maybe releasing the head to the floor. And then after a few breaths, we're going to just uncurl, stuck up for a moment, and then we're going to head into our relaxation position on the mat. So this is where you may want a little head cushion or folded up towel, and have your other props and bits and pieces nearby. So I'm going to come onto my back, keeping the spine or finding my neutral position. If you're using your cushion, just try not to fill up the space between your neck. So try to give your neck a little bit of room to manoeuvre, but just support your head. Find that neutral position of your pelvis. Let the ribs soften and settle down. Okay? And the legs and the feet will be parallel. You just rest the hands on the hips so you can get that feedback. Let's do a little bit of chin tuck. So just comfortable breathing and just starting to lengthen the back of the neck as you draw the chin towards your chest without squashing your throat. And then just returning to neutral where your chin and forehead are level with the floor. Just maybe three or four.
And then you can return to neutral. Keep that even distance between your shoulder and your ear. And we'll just let the head roll side to side, just two or three times each way. Just comfortable breathing pattern for you. And then when you've done just two or three, we'll come back to the midline and we'll just let the arms rise up. We'll do some normal shoulder drops then we're going to add a little bit of a spiral. So the arms are in line with your shoulders. Arms and palms are long, fingers are long, shoulder width apart. You can inhale, just reach the arms and shoulders up and then exhale, soften and release them down. So inhale, reach up and exhale to release down. So absolutely fine to stay with this. Or if you want to add just a little variation, you could just make a loose fist, stick your thumbs out so the thumbs are pointing towards the head end of my mat. I'm keeping the arms long. And then as I inhale, I'm just going to spiral the arms inwards so the thumbs face each other at the same time as I reach the arms and shoulders up. And then exhale, unravel and release down. So I'm back in that start position, but just adding a little bit of medial rotation as the arms begin to lift up. Just a few more there. Let's make this the last one. And then you can unravel and bring the fingertips to your shoulders. A couple of elbow circles there if you needed to. And then if you have your band, we're going to grab that now. If you don't have your band, it doesn't matter. You could just have the arms and hands in this position with the fingers interlaced roughly in line with your breastbone. If you do have a band, I'm going to just fold mine in half because it's quite light resistance. So just doubling it up and I'm bringing the arms up in line with the shoulders. So I've got the palms facing away from me, shoulder width apart. And um, you can either keep the fingers long or make a loose fist. Just try to keep the arms in alignment and make sure we don't start to flick the wrists or bend the elbows back. So what I want to do now is just pull that band apart a little bit just to begin to connect to our centre. So I'm going to take a breath in. As you breathe out, we just slightly pull that band apart and definitely connect to your centre. And hopefully you can just feel the waist begin to cinch in and the ribs begin to glide down a little bit. And then inhale, you can release that sensation. Just release your centre for a moment. So breath and centre, just start to pull that band apart, just cueing in to firing up your centre without tensing the shoulders and then release. So that arm movement, the entire arm, not just elbows and wrists. And then as I mentioned, if you don't have your band, you could just cut the hands together and get that sense, almost of magnetic push and pull that your the arms are about to separate and they come back together. So if you're using the band, I'll carry on with that, but it's fine to do this next bit without using the band as well. So just making sure pelvis is neutral, legs are parallel. We're just going to add a simple knee drop with this little band pull. So as you breathe out and centre, you're just pulling on the band and you're going to open one leg out to the side, keeping the pelvis neutral. And then inhale, leg comes back and you can release that pull on the band. So breath and centre, other side. And then inhale, coming back home. Just do three more of those to each side. So try to keep the pelvis level. The leg that isn't opening should stay up to the ceiling. Just use that little nudging of the band apart to get that deeper connection to your centre. So I think the next one should be the last one to each side. And then once you've evened up, just float the arms down. You can keep hold of the band if you've got it, otherwise just have the arms down by your side. So we're going to do a leg slide and a rib cage closure. So let's start with the rib cage closure. So as you breathe out centre, just like you're rolling that band up, your thighs, that light tension and pull between the arms, and we'll just float the arms back only as far as you can go without the ribs flaring. And then you can inhale, stay, and then exhale, we we'll travel back again. So that's just the rib cage closure component. You could stay with that if you needed to. Otherwise, let's add a single leg slide. So as you breathe out centre, you're sliding one leg away as the arms go back. Inhale, flex the foot, leave the arms, and then exhale, gathering back in again. So breath and centre sliding. Good. Inhale, flex the foot, leave the arms, and exhale to come back again. Good. So I'm going to just do a couple more of those to each side. So just easy movement, but you're definitely just beginning to connect to your centre. And then if you do have your band, once we come back from there, we're going to just use your band to go into a hamstring stretch. If you don't have your band, you can do the same movement, perhaps have the, the hands around the thighs. 
So just make sure you engage your centre, we'll just float up to a single knee fold, wrap your band around the arch of your foot, and then we'll just start to lengthen that leg up and away into your hamstring stretch. Keep the waist long, pelvis neutral, you can flex the foot and then maybe the other leg, your leg can glide up just a little further if it's comfortable, but don't force it up. If you want to slide the other leg away, either fully or partially, you can do it. Just take two or three breaths into there. If it's comfortable keeping the other leg fully lengthened, you can do but absolutely fine to bend it back in. I'm going to just soften the foot, so rather than two flex, and we'll just do some hip circles now. So slightly turning that leg out without losing neutral. Just do five leg circles to each direction. So careful, we haven't tensed up the shoulders as well. So we're just breathing, scooping, centering, stirring five times in each direction. So just the size of circle where it's not disturbing anything else. So five one way, and then we do five the other way. And then when you've done your five each side there, you could just come back to that hamstring stretch position, bend that leg in, and we'll just switch straight over onto that other leg. So making sure we're neutral on the other side, just lengthening the leg away into your hamstring stretch, keeping the waist long, pelvis neutral, flex the foot if you like, and then just raise up to where you can get to. If you needed to do it without the band, just hold the hands around the back of the thigh. So just take a few breaths into there. Decide if you want to slide the other leg away, either just for when you're doing your stretch or when you're doing your leg circles, otherwise keep it bent. And then after your hamstrings had just a little bit of a stretch, we're gonna turn that leg out from the hip, keep breathing, scooping, centering, and we'll do five circles in each direction here. Okay, so keep the other leg still, the pelvis level, careful the shoulders haven't begun to creep up. And then when you've evened up with your circles there, so just five each way, you can bend that leg and then we're going to come back in. You can pop your band to the side for the time being. Maybe some spine curls and begin to add a curl up. So we're still neutral with the lower half. You may not need your head support as you begin to peel up into your spine curls. So let's just have the arms down by your side. Really try and open up the front of the chest and the collarbones. You could lightly press the arms and hands into the floor. Try not to squash up your throat, okay? So breath in as you breathe out and center. It's gonna go into your pelvic tilt and begin to wheel and peel the spine up to neutral to wherever is comfortable for you. Breath at the top. And then as you breathe out, we're just softening, peeling and releasing back down. So just enjoy. Try to get as much movement and articulation between each segment of your spine as you can. So breath at the top, and then as you breathe out, softening back down. There's a variation, you could just lift in one piece as a bridge if you needed to. Either that was better for your back, or perhaps if osteoporosis might be an issue, you keep the spine in neutral rather than that sequential movement. And option to add on, we're going to add on a little bit of a curl up or a stargaze type movement. So I'll show you that separately and then we'll pop that together. So we're going to bring the hands behind your head. So in that curl up position or a bit like the cork through shoulders we started off with. So if um, you have osteoporosis or low back issues, you might do the first option, which I call the stargaze. We're going to just inhale, slightly chin tuck, and then exhale, just hovering up the upper body. So I'm not really coming into a curl up. My gaze is more upright and I feel a bit more work on the upper part of the abdominals rather than the lower part. And then you inhale, stay, lower back down. So you just keep that length, a little bit of a chin tuck, and it's more of a hover than a rounding. As opposed to the curl up, which you inhale, chin tuck, and then exhale, you start to peel up and we're keeping everything in neutral. Breath there. And then lengthening and releasing back down again. Okay, so either of those you could stick with, and then we're going to add those to your spine curl. So we're going to do one end up, the other end down, and then vice versa. So with the curl up, as you breathe out and center, you're going to peel up into that spine curl first, breath at the top, and then as you lower down from your spine curl, you're going to begin to come up to your curl up or maybe your stargaze breath there and then as you start to lower from your curl up you begin to come up to your spine curl or your bridge breath there 
and then you're peeling. So like a seesaw, one end up, one end down. Maybe you're not curling up, perhaps you're keeping it that bit lower, the stargaze that I showed you. Good. That's it. Let's just do a couple more of these or stick with the curl ups on their own or with the spine curls on their own. Hopefully you're lengthening. I feel I'm sliding off my mat a little bit. We shall readjust in just a moment. So lovely. Let's make this next one the last one and then you can release back down from there. Shimmy on down your mat if you like me and you slid up. So I'm going to come onto the side and then come up to seated. I'm going to just do a little bit of work with your roll back. So you band if you've got it. So just come towards the edge of your mat and make sure you've got enough mat space or soft-ish surface behind you. Find those sit bones again. So you're sat really tall. You have your band, unravel it, and we're going to just wrap it around the arch of your feet. You can keep the legs bent if you need to. You could have them straight or halfway between the two. The most important thing is that to start with, you're sat up really tall and that you're not kind of compressed and slumped down. So experiment with that. I'm gonna try and lengthen my legs and keep that length through the spine. Legs, not having my legs hip width, you could do the same or you could bring them together. So feet are flexed and that's where we've got the band, band anchored around. So inhale, really lengthen. And then exhale, we're gonna just soften into that seated C shape like a cat, but try not to hunch the shoulders up. And then you can begin to lengthen from there. So this is kind of your first building block for the movement. If this isn't good for you or for your back or your osteoporosis, I would suggest you keep the knees a little bit softer and keep the spine neutral and just do a very small hinge back, but keeping the spine neutral and ignoring the next bit that I'm gonna go through. Okay, so otherwise, you still either stick with your hinge or, or come with me for the, the roll back. So we're gonna sit tall, soften into that C shape and you can begin to peel and release back. Maybe it's just a challenge point. Maybe you release all the way down to the floor. Okay, and then once you've landed or paused, inhale, think of that chin tuck, exhale, begin to glide up. Hopefully the band will help you or you can climb up the band if you need to. Once shoulders are over hips, you can stack up really tall. So we're gonna just soften into that C shape, peeling and releasing back. So, so with that same articulation that you have with your spine curls, really keeping that sense of length. Just do a couple more here. Maybe you're not going all the way down to the mat and that's fine might work just to go to, for you to go to that challenge point, breath and stay, and then gathering back up, or absolutely fine to stay neutral as I mentioned. And then once you come up from this one, we're gonna stay seated, just get rid of your band, we'll keep it to the side for a moment. So shimmy, shimmy down towards the end of my mat. Make sure you still got those sit bones in contact with the mat. And I'm going to just come into like a balance or rolling like a ball preparation. So I've got the hands behind my thighs, legs are bent. I'm sat tall initially, and then I'm going to try and find that lengthened C shape again. So once I've found that, just coming in towards your balance point, and maybe that's enough just to breathe there to keep that scoop, to get that sense of pushing the thighs into the arms and the arms into the thighs. Or you might want to shimming down a little bit or you might want to hold on to your ankles or if you need a bit of help hold up your band in like quarters and have it over your ankles and when I'm in that this position I've definitely got the arms pressing into the legs legs pressing into the arms and I'm in this tight little ball shape that I can find and then if you wanted to you could inhale rock back and exhale to return so inhale rock back exhale to return Okay, so just a little bit of rolling like a ball if that's comfortable for you. Otherwise, you could stay in that balanced position. I'm just gonna do one more. And then when you come back, so removing the band, I'm gonna start to peel back towards single leg stretch. So some of you might want to come down and have your head on the mat for that. Some of you might want to stay up in your curl up. So if you need to get any cushions or anything ready, please do that. So we're gonna come up and that rolling like a ball shape, and I'm going to start to re release back down. So I'm going to curl up 
and you're in your double knee fold. If you need hands behind your head, that's fine. If you need to have the head down, that's fine. You keep the legs higher. So a few options here. So option one is the more traditional. You're hugging one leg in as the other leg extends away. Keep that height of your curl. Any tension of the, of the neck, you keep the hands behind your head. And if you needed to, squish around some of my cushions, you might have a head down on one or two cushions and you could keep the legs a little bit higher. So maybe you've already done loads already. If not, let's try and do four or five more together. Strong work through your centre. One leg extending as the other leg draws in towards you. The head is down, it's a bit harder to reach that ankle. So you might just guide it in with the hands on the outer side of your knees. And then once you're done, let's just hug the legs in for a moment. Upper body down if it isn't already. And let your head roll side to side a couple of times. And then you want to lower the legs one at a time. That's just your legs do. And then we do a little bit of hip roll. So to help lift your small head support back if you need to. If you have weights nearby or an alternative, we just add some arm opening or arm fly to that movement. So let's bring the legs together and then option to add the arms in your hug fly shape. So from shoulder drop position, just rounding slightly. So we're starting with hip rolls, one with the legs and feet glued together. So as you breathe out and centre, pelvis the legs one way, opposite arm opens and you look towards it, and then inhale, you come back again. So breath and centre, opening out, and inhale to come back. So just careful you don't go too far, that the ribs flare or the shoulder blades leave the mat. And we're not arching that lumbar spine, you're keeping that control from your centre and your waist. If you wanted to add on, you could peel over, so legs to the left, arm to the right, and then maybe extend that right leg, but the thighs stay glued. And then a little bit more work to bring it back to the centre and lower. So then same on the other side, if the legs go to the right, arm to the left, or vice versa, left leg will extend, and then a little bit more work to bring it back to the centre. So add that if you want to, or stick with the previous version. Let's just do a couple more. And then last one to each side. If you'd rather finish with the arms down to the floor to do your last one, that's fine. And I'm just going to pop the weights out of the way. And then once you've come back from there, just shuffle the legs back to parallel rather than connected. And we slide one leg away. The second leg will come into knee fold and the opposite arms are going to just go to the outer side of the thigh of that bent and raised leg and I'm just going to draw it over, I'm going to hip roll over myself and I'm going to just look towards that opposite arm and just take two or three breaths into there, still keeping those shoulder blades glued to the mat and then when you're ready we just slowly unravel back to the centre, swap legs so that second leg will slide away in line with the hip and the other leg will fold up into knee fold, opposite hand to the outer side of your thigh, and we're just hip rolling over yourself. You can extend the other arm and look towards it, and just take two or three breaths into there. And when you're ready, just slowly unravel back to the centre. If you'd like to take a full body stretch before we come into side line, please do. You can slide both legs away, arms up and over, few breaths there and then when you're ready we'll roll onto your side and we're going to do some sideline rotation and some side leg work. So for this you might need some more, a bit more head support, so some extra cushions. If you have an over ball, it might be comfortable to pop it between the knees but if not don't worry you could either use a cushion or you might not need anything at all there. So I'm in sideline chair position. So the waist is long and lifted, possibly with something between the knees if you've got it. So just keep everything stacked, hip over hip, shoulder over shoulder, waist long and lifted and plenty of head support behind you. So everything stacked up, although that top hand and arm will be a little closer towards you than the underneath arm. So we're going to start with a few arm openings and then bow and arrow. So for your um, bow, sorry, arm opening first, so for your arm opening, we'll just inhale, open that arm to the ceiling. Release the shoulder if you need to, and then exhale. We're just opening up from the thoracic spine, 
Take a breath once you get there. And as you breathe out, you can unravel and come back again. Let's do three more of these. So we'll inhale open, release here if you need to, keep the waist long, and then exhale back. Breath there. And as you breathe out, ribs bring you back and arms come to close. If you wanted to, and you have something between the knees, you might want to extend the shin, but keep the thighs stacked and that waist long as you open out. Breath there. And then gliding back and the arm comes back in again. So you could stay with arm openings, or we'll just do a few bow and arrow as well. So bow and arrow, you'd inhale, hand to chest. Exhale as you rotate and open. Breath there. Ribs bring you back and arm comes to close. So you inhale, just draw the hand towards your chest and then exhale as you rotate and open. Breath. Ribs bring you back and arm comes to close. Let's do a couple more. You could add the leg extension if you wanted to. Still keep the hips stacked and the waist long. And then gliding back. And then when you finish, we just stay stacked and just reach and roll that top arm and upper body forward as you inhale and exhale, rock back. Just maybe three or four times. And then we do a little bit of side leg work. Okay, so for your side leg work, you probably don't need the ball so you can ditch that. Leave the big cushions if you need them. And if you don't need them, I'll get rid of those as well. So you can just extend that underneath arm and just have the little cushion on your arm to support your neck and your head. So you could stay in chair position if you need to, and that's better for your back. And just really make sure that you're not tilted forward and we're not kind of slumped towards the mat. If you wanted to, you could extend the legs away, a bit more of that torpedo shape. Obviously, it's a little bit more wobbly, so maybe you, if you need to come back to chair or just bend the knees a little bit, that's okay. So I'm going to try, I'm going to do a few in chair with you and a few in that torpedo position. So we're keeping neutral. Top hand or arm, where it helps you. So it might be in front of you here, it might be hand on your hip, but try not to wake up that shoulder. So let's do lift and lower. So we're going to lengthen that top leg away, creating space around the hip, the leg is in line with the hip. Softly point the foot, and then as you inhale, I'm going to lift up that leg without shortening in the waist, and then exhale, flex to lower just to hip high. I'm going to do four in this position, and then four in that torpedo shape. So inhale, lift, exhale, flex and lower. That's it. So either stay with that, or you might want to do a set with me just with the, the four in that torpedo shape, working more on that length through the underneath side of the waist, and you could inhale, lift, exhale, flex and lower, and the legs would connect together. So it's doing four of each there. So you pick and choose which position. We'll do a few of each with me. That's it, good. And then once you've done those few, you could either be in chair position again, or you could stay in this torpedo shape. And we're gonna just do a few leg circles. We want to hover up that top leg in line with your hip. Toes softly pointed. Let's just do three or four little circles in each direction. So they'll be really tiny if your legs are both legs are lengthened away. You might have a slightly bigger circle if you're in that chair position. So just four little circles each way. And then we're going to lower that leg and we'll all come back into chair position if you're not already there to keep that pelvis neutral. Now we're going to do forward and back and then a little bit of a slow kind of bicycle movement. So let's lengthen that leg away in line with the hip. Flexing the foot. Again, you might prefer to have your hand here. For me, it's helpful to have it on my hip. So breath and center, kick forward, keeping neutral. Inhale, point, exhale, back. Inhale, flex, exhale, kick. Inhale, point, and exhale, back. So try and open up the front of the hip without dipping in that lumbar spine. So this is my fourth one. You could stay with this. We're gonna go into really slow motion bicycles. So the next time you come back, Maybe place your hand on your thigh, keep that leg at hip height, and then inhale, I'm gonna bend the knee, but try not to swing the leg forward until I finish bending the knee, and then I can mirror the underneath leg, and then extend. So just exhale away, inhale, bend, exhale, swing forward, and then inhale, extend. Just do a couple more of those, or you could do your forward and back. And then when you've done, either pause in your quad stretch, or maybe you want to sweep the leg back and just round and rotate that upper body forward for a few breaths. 
or perhaps you prefer to have a breather and just give you a foot and a quick rub, no problem. And then from there, we're gonna just do a little bit of side twist prep. So you can have the feet in line with your bottom, the oyster shape, elbow directly underneath your shoulder, palm facing down or make a fist, really keep that length and lift through this underneath side. So most important, so I've been banging on about all terms, so sorry to my clients with me, that you're trying to keep that support through the shoulder so we're not sinking down at all and we're growing longer. So option one is you pause here and you add that lovely side stretch. That might be enough. Option two, you could hover up the waist and maybe add that side reach. Okay, so you decide. So breath and center. We've already done a couple, we're gonna do three more. You need to turn the head if that's more comfortable, no problem. So glide up, inhale, stay if you can, and then try to land without making a sound. We'll do one more here. And then once you're done, you're gonna come up either to seated or kind of mermaid position of your legs if that's comfortable. Definitely shake up that shoulder a little bit. And then you could come up and over, just take a counter mermaid stretch or merman stretch on that side. Lovely, and then once you're done, we'll swing the legs around the other way. Do your rotation and your side leg on that side. So grab your bigger cushions if you have them. Maybe your over ball. So we did our arm openings and bow and arrow and some side leg work as well. Okay, so we're chair position, possibly with a ball or cushion between the knees if you've got it and it's more comfortable. Keeping that waist long and lifted and everything stacked. So we do four arm openings and then four bow and arrow. We're going to inhale, open that arm to the ceiling, release your shoulder, look at your hand, and then exhale to rotate back. Breath there, the ribs bring you back, and arm comes to close. So inhale, open, just the thoracic spine opening, breath to stay, and then gliding back. Then option if you wanted to, you could extend the leg, keep the thighs stacked, still keep that waist long. Good. So inhale, open, and exhale, rotate. So either stay with the arm opening, we're gonna do four bow and arrow. So inhale, hand to chest, exhale, rotate and open. Breath there, the ribs bring you back and arm comes to close. Inhale, hand to chest, exhale, rotate and open. Breath there, the ribs bring you back and arm comes to close. And then again, if you wanted to add the arm, the, the leg to the arm movement as well, you can do. Just that leg extension, otherwise stay with just one thing to worry about. And then when you finish, just three or four, inhale, reach and roll that top arm forward, and then exhale to come back. Lovely. So this is letting that lovely stretch in the underneath shoulder blade, underneath the shoulder blade. So get rid of the overball if you have it. Leave the cushions if you need to, otherwise extend the underneath arm and just pop the little cushion there to support your head. So as before, option of either chair position or that torpedo shape. So I'll start in chair with you um, and then you can decide where you want to pitch it. So it's lift and lower first of all. So everything stacked, top hand or arm where you need it to be. Try not to let that shoulder creep up. Just want to lengthen that top leg away in line with the hip. Soft point of the foot first. So as you breathe out, centre we lift. Inhale, flex and lower just to hip height for this first space. So keep the waist long, in, waist long. Inhale, length and lift. Exhale, flex and lower. That's it. We've just got one more here. And then stay with that chair position if you need to. Otherwise, lengthen the underneath leg away, keeping that support through your centre. Maybe the legs need, you know, need to be halfway or maybe you need to nudge that, the longer legs forward a little bit. And then four more. So inhale, length and lift with a soft point. Exhale, flex and lower. So keeping that same distance, rib to hip, and definitely keeping that lift through the underneath side. So stay in this torpedo type shape if you want to. Otherwise, come back to chair. We're going to just do a few circles. So we're going to hover up that leg in line with the hip, toes softly pointed. Keep breathing, scooping, centering. That three or four circles in each direction. They'll be tiny if we're in the uh, extended position with the underneath leg. They may be a little bigger if you're in that chair position. So once you've done those few each way, we're all gonna come back into chair position. Make sure we're neutral here. And then forward and back and bicycle. So let's lengthen that top leg away in line with the hip. Top hand where it's helpful 
for you. You might prefer here. I'm going to keep my hand on my hip to help keep, keep that steady for me. So leg long, foot flexed. As you breathe out centre, I'm going to kick forward without tilting the pelvis. Inhale, soft point, exhale, sweep it back without arching the back. So kick forward, exhale. Inhale, point, exhale, back. So let's do one or two more here. And then we're going to that slow motion bicycle movement. Okay, so the next time the leg sweeps back, option to bring that hand on your thigh. Try to keep the thigh really still as you inhale, slowly bend. Exhale, swing that bent leg forward. Inhale, extend. So you're just still sweeping back and you're bending, but try not to let the thigh travel forward until you finish bending the knee. Then it swings back and extend. So exhale back, inhale, bend. Exhale, forward. Inhale, extend. Just one more. And then when you're done, you might want to pause in your quad stretch for a couple of breaths. You might want to take the leg back and round and rotate your upper body forward for a few breaths. Or just have a breather and a quick rub. And then once you're done from there, we're going to do your side twist prep on this side. So oyster legs, so feet in line with your bottom. Elbow directly underneath your shoulder. Either make a fist or palm down. Pressing the floor away. So you've got this length out through the crown of your head. We're not slumping down at all. And we're trying to create space around the neck and the shoulder. So first option is you maintain that position and you add that lovely side reach and take a breath. Option two, you may need the hand around the waist. You hover up and then maybe adding that side reach, breath to stay and then lower. We're going to do three more. You choose which one. So you might want to lift, you might want to add the arm, inhale to stay and then try to lower without making a sound. Just two more. That's lovely. Last one. And then once you finish, we've come up to seated or to mermaid position of your legs. Definitely shake out that shoulder a little bit, a few circles, and then take a little counter mermaid, mermaid, merman stretch. Just a few breaths into there. And then if you need to, you might want to do a little bit of a gluten piriformis stretch from that side leg work. So you may need your head cushion back. So we're just gonna come back into relaxation position. Make sure you're neutral. And then knee fold one leg, turn out from the hip, keeping the waist long. If that's enough of a stretch, just stay there for a few breaths. Otherwise, you draw that second leg up, loosely hugging behind the thigh and using my forearm just to push that outer thigh out a little bit. So just two or three breaths into there. I'm trying to keep the tailbone anchored down or you may go into a little tiny bit of a pelvic tilt. Then you lower and untangle, we'll do the other side. So knee fold and turn out, waist long, and then drawing a second leg up. If you need to, you may not need to. So just a few breaths into there. You might want to use your forearm to encourage that other bent leg to nudge out to the side a little more. Great. And then once you're done, you can lower and untangle. And then we're going to do some extension. So you can come onto your tummy um, we're going to do dart today, so if you need a bit of support for your centre, you might want to put a small cushion under your tummy, you may need a cushion under your forehead as well. Um, I'm going to just keep the legs in parallel rather than add the big squeeze part of the legs, which some of you might be a bit more familiar with, but feel free to do that if you wanted to. So my legs are going to be parallel. Really try and lengthen yourself out on the mat as long as you can before you get into position. Your forehead will be down. I'm going to just keep mine hovered up so hopefully you can hear me better. So arms down by your side. So as you breathe out and centre, nudge a marble with your nose as you glide the upper body up and let the arms and palms turn in. Breath to stay. And as you breathe out, lengthen and release back down. So make sure you've got support through your centre. We're not dipping into that lumbar spine. We're working on extending your thoracic spine. The next time you come up, maybe you could spiral the arms a little further so the palms face the floor. And we've opened up the chest and the collarbones a little bit more. And then you can unravel and release. Good. So really wide, open and smiley collarbones. And we're still just focusing on that extension of the upper back, keeping the length through the neck. I always think more of length than height with your extension. Just do one more here. 
good and then once you've done from there you're going to get a little bit of cobra prep so bring your thumbs in a line with your nose your arms at a right angle let's take the legs wider still but wider than hip width slightly turned out so try to have your forehead down get that sense of arms and hands drawing down drawing apart so the shoulder blades are wrapping around the side of your ribs so as you breathe out and center now your marble with your nose as you glide that upper body up breath here and as you breathe out lengthen and release back down so breath and center nudge that marble with your nose as you glide up breath there lengthen and release back down so we're not pushing with the arms we're lengthening and lifting your upper body away from them it might help next time you come up just notice if you press the fingers into the floor into the mat possibly you find a little bit more length and then release and then we're going to just do a few more either stay with what you're doing or maybe you might want to bend one leg and i'm going to just turn my head the other way and then unravel back to center and then bend the other leg turn the head to the other side and then you can lower let's do one more of those so either your normal cobra prep maybe adding the fingers and possibly that bend of one leg just turning your head the other way back through to center other leg head to the other side back to center and then we'll lower and then we'll sit back into your rest position or come onto your back and hug the knees into your chest so toes together knees apart reversing back or come onto your back and give yourself a hug so just take a few breaths into there and maybe you want to just walk your left hand over towards your right and just lengthen down that side just a couple of breaths pass back through center and then your right hand could come over your left or vice versa couple of breaths there just to lengthen out down that side and then we're going to come back to the center and uncurl and then do a little bit of high kneeling so kneel in the middle of your mat if you can this one i call the rainbow star and um, it's weight bearing onto one hand so you may prefer just do a high kneeling side reach so that's a really nice alternative if you need it so otherwise i've got knees under hips make sure you're neutral so you're not sticking your bottom out you're keeping that length so the hips and the knees are in line i'm going to kick one out one leg out to the side so the outer edge of my foot is on the floor i'm not really trying to keep my foot flat on the floor you might be halfway between the two but it is in line with my hip arms out to the side and i'm going to tip down and just let that hand touch down so put the palm down but don't sink into that shoulder so keep pressing up and away i'm still aiming for a diagonal line and i'm going to bring this arm up and over and just take a breath and enjoy that side stretch take another breath and again you're ready we're going to just lengthen up and lift the leg away and the arm straight up to the ceiling and we'll lower back to that side reach without sinking into that shoulder and then lift and lengthen away so just breathing and centering i think that's three two more if you can and then when you're done we're going to try and come up and into a little bit of a balance before we go over to the other side so just once you're back into the middle of the mat high kneeling again just check we're well aligned kick out your second leg out to the side in line with the hip arms out to the side and we're going to tip down to the second side place your palm down but still keep that sense of pressing the floor away so you still should be in a diagonal line and i just realized i'm slightly out of shot there so i'm going to shuffle down a tiny bit so bring the arm up and over enjoy that side stretch without sinking into that supporting shoulder breath and center we're going to lengthen up so arm lengthens up leg lengthens away breathing centering throughout so that's one we've got two so pressing the floor away like you're suspended in midair we're aiming for five one and three four and then five and then come back try to balance to find your way back into that high kneeling position so the next thing we're going to work on might be tough for your knees so either use cushions and if your knees are an issue i would suggest you do chest expansion 
on its own, which is where you can bring the arms up as you exhale and inhale, press back. So that's an option and you're not going to move the thighs. So knees are niggly, please stay with that. Otherwise, you've still got knees under your hips. I'm going to place my hands on my thighs, slightly do a little pelvic tilt forward. So you should definitely feel those glutes switch on and do a little bit of hinge back. So as you breathe out and centre, I'm just leaning back and put a little hinge back and then inhale to come up, come back. So that movement's from my thighs and the quads, not in my back. I'm aiming to keep a diagonal line from my knee, hip and shoulder. Let's just try a couple more. That's it, one more. Lovely, okay. And then we're gonna just return briefly to four point kneeling. So if you need to just stretch out the legs or wiggle around at all, you can do. So just come to arms under shoulders, knees under hips again, press the floor away. So either you might, if you've had enough now, you might want to do some cat or some rocking in neutral, that's fine. Otherwise, we're gonna just curl the toes underneath you, breath and center, let's just push the floor away. So you're in that little hover for a moment, breath or two, and then lower. So still keep that width across the shoulders, breath and center, that little hover like you're ready to pounce. Stay with that, we're gonna just do one leg pull plank. So you could keep the legs hip width or you might wanna bring them together. So breath and center, we're gonna slide one leg away, curl the toes underneath and then pick up that other leg. So breathing, scooping, centering, we're trying to rock back and return just a tiny bit, up to five, that's all. Really nice. And then when you're done, you can lower the knees, Legs can come back to hip width. Feel free to do another little bit of cat. And then reverse back. And we're going to unravel to stack back up again. And then we'll come just to a comfortable seated position on your mat. So that might be as we began, legs crossed or long frog, whatever is, feels comfortable for you. So do find those sit bones again. Lengthen up, prop yourself up if you need to. That's no problem at all. And we're going to just do a next stretch. So let the arms really stand by your side. Keep that length through the spine. We're going to just let the head tilt to one side. If you wanted to, you could add the hand and just ease the head and neck over. Maybe you want to play around with moving the arm forward and back or turning it in or out a little bit, just so you find that different stretch. And then you can let it settle down. And then option to add on that you just slightly turn the neck and head so you look towards your armpit or towards your bent arm for a breath or two. And then we just unravel to face forward and stack up. And we do the same on the other side. So lengthen chin tuck, tilt the head to the side. Maybe use a hand just to ease that head over. Play around with just moving your free arm forward or back, turning it in or out. And then once you're Ready, you've explored that. You can let the hand and arm soften down and then maybe turn the neck and the head just towards your arm. So you might see your armpit or the, the, your elbow. Just a breath or two there. And you can begin to unravel to face forward and stack up and we'll just shrug and circle the shoulders a few times if you need to lengthen and shake out the legs, please do. And thank you very much for joining me. We really appreciate your support. Thank you so much for your really generous donations to Cancer Research UK. And if you haven't donated, please do if you can. The details are in the bio on the Pilates Workshop UK Instagram page, or you could check out full information on the website, which is the Pilates Workshop. .co.uk. So thank you very much. I'm going to stop rambling now so we can get ready to pass on to the next teacher. So you have another lovely class coming up with Lisa, which I'm sure you'll really all enjoy. So thank you all so much. And thank you to the amazing team of teachers that have really worked so hard to put this all together. And uh, we hope that you've enjoyed it. So thank you. I'm going to switch off Instagram and hand over first before I close off on Facebook. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye.